and I love that word basking in the in the love of God in one of my books I have a statement uh, and I'll paraphrase it that life is not just about scaling mountains of achievement mm -hmm. but uh, floating in waters of contentment oh that's you beautiful. know and that, uh, Howard Thurman uh, gave me a, a sense of how important that was to spirituality uh, and that it was achievable yes you know and, yes. and I am I will be eternally grateful for that yes yes I think that um, I was particularly uh, uh, attracted to to this idea which I think became um, central to the civil rights movement that you need to go in yes. before you go out mm -hmm. And that that idea of cultivating some kind of inner life, mm -hmm. and actually even looking at your inner life, yep. was just so instrumental to your being able to then deal with whatever else was going on out there. And it sort of relates to this idea of that abiding acceptance. That's right. But but more, I guess, more importantly, that you know, in so many of his writings, he talks about going in mm -hmm. and and really looking at what's going on That's in there, right? right? Yeah. And, yeah. <clears throat> you know, yeah. what are you doing? And, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and do you know why you're doing it, uh -huh. you know? Mm -hmm. um, I, I just, I, and I, I don't know, maybe I'm just attracted to that sort of inner yeah. dialogue or inner life because it does then begin to have a great impact on what's, what's in the outer life. That's right. That's, and that's the gift. I think some people, the unique gift of Thurman. I think there's some in the mystical tradition who um, promote the inner life and it seems to end there. That you have a sense of who you are and a deepening uh, appreciation for your being, mm -hmm. yes, and it ends there. But mm -hmm. with, with Thurman, it doesn't end there. You go deep enough and you come out in the middle of your sisters and your brothers. Right. Which to me says the best thing, some people are guilty, I think, feel guilty about taking time for themselves. Mm -hmm. um, they just feel like they ought to be, that it's, self, it's selfish to do so. Right. But my sense is, and I'm convinced now, that it's more selfish not to. Right. Because if I constantly go and go and go, uh, I ensure that the world will never see me at my best. Right. And that's selfish. That yes. the world will not see my flourishing self, the self that has vast basked in the love of God to the point of being just overflowing with the presence of God. Uh, and what a selfish act. And so it is, it is a, a, an act, I think, of great generosity to the world uh, to take the time to go within, be blessed of God over and over again. Mm -hmm. And what bounty we have for people who are thirsty. Yes. So it is not a selfish act, it is an act of great uh, generosity to take time to, f to find out who we are from the inside out. Yes. It may have been Martin Luther King Jr. who turned me on to Howard Thurman. I'm, I'm trying to think earlier on, I grew up as a boy preacher and uh, actually the night that Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, was killed, I remember seeing a video clip they were showing of him. Uh, giving the mountain top speech mm -hmm. the night before. Mm -hmm. That night he he uh, died, but he came alive for me and my spirit and my soul. Mm -hmm. And I kind of grew up uh, almost modeling myself after, so, as so many, I think, young preachers did, after Martin King. Um, and never in my, and he was a mentor for, for a long time. Never in my wildest dreams did I think that, at this stage in my life, that, uh, even more than Martin King, that I'd be sort of a disciple of uh, the person who Martin King was inspired by, Howard Thurman. Wow. And yes. it's because he speaks so deeply to matters of the heart. Right. I had a gentle father, Frederick Jesse Jones. I stand on his shoulders, and uh, he was very gentle. And um, as I'm a parent now of four, and I understand now as a parent how important parental gentleness is uh, for youngsters at an early age. So I think Saul's uh, brief but significant uh, contribution to, to, to young Thurman was very important yes. for him.
And you know, I think that that gentleness is really an instrumental part of compassion. Yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> that you have to, you know, be able to be gentle, mm -hmm. but that you, you you are gentle in your um, mm -hmm. dealings with others and with yourself. I mean, yes. That's sort of what I think about when I think about compassion, is that you are being kind and gentle to yourself. Yes. And then in doing that, you can be kind and gentle that's right. to others. There you go. You know, and I think sometimes we. Um, are not aware of our own woundedness mm. and, and, and really, really um, uh, trying to heal or to, to, to care for ourselves mm -hmm. in that woundedness, which then allows us to have that same um, compassion for others who may be aggressive or you know, speak out in anger or whatever, yep. you know, rather than to get angry, to be more, to practice. And I had to, I, I put the emphasis on practice. Oh, practicing it, yes. I had to practice <laughs> being more loving yes, and, yes. and more forgiving mm -hmm. um, because you're really doing that for yourself. Absolutely. And yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. It does take practice. Uh, but we have, we have within us great reservoirs of strengths and abilities mm -hmm. and uh, I mean the creative energy that created this wondrous universe is as much inside of us as that energy is in the world and so that potential is always in us and I think that's the genius of, of Thurman as well. Mm -hmm. He grew up with a sense of that cosmic uh, companionship Yes. Inside of him. Yes. And uh, just trusted it. Yes. There's nothing that we could ever do or right. say that could cause God to stop loving us. Yes. Now, for some, that's too much to take because we're so used to earning. Yes. And proving. And, but it's, it's unconditional. It's unconditional. And if we can trust that and receive. You, you said something a moment ago. I used to, about remembering. I used to think that the essence of sin was, you know, committing this or not doing this. Or, I now think that the essence of sin is forgetting. Forgetting who we are in God. Yes. And if we can, if we can be reminded by the sages, such as Howard Thurman, or the uh, nature, or the, the, you know, the witness that comes, sometimes we're smiling and we don't know why we're smiling. There are ways, there are ways that God whispers, I think, to all of us. And if we just pause, we can hear the whisper. Yes. That gives us a sense of strength and uh, uh, acceptance. Yes. Well, you know, the one thing I think how Thurman would say to us if we wanted to, you know, sort of in the mist of spirit direction, where do you find God? He'd say, go outside. That's right. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. And you say in your article, one of the, with all due respect to urban America and all the metropolises around the world, uh, there's something to be said for spaciousness mm -hmm. and open places mm -hmm. and uh, where you can just breathe and stretch and uh, receive, as Thurman yes. did, the witness of the trees, yes. the witness of the ocean, the witness of of whatever you are, whatever is nearby that can bless you in extraordinary and memorable ways. Right, right. And certainly, you know, to again, pause. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like you go out there and then turn on the iPad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, yes, that's right, which we are prone to do. Yes. You know, that you actually have another opportunity to bask in that's the presence, right? right? Um, by, you know, being out there with all that nature, it's just so... Mm -hmm. Wonderful, wonderful ways to fill the presence. Oh, oh, and the presence, and then you, you, uh, you feel that, and you're touched by that, and then you, what grows inside of you is a sense of the wonder that's inside. Right. And then you begin to uh, go to those places that you refer to within, and realize again that God is as much inside you as God is outside. 